So I'm going to ask a few of the folks to just say a couple of words. This great gentleman, I saw him on television the other day. I, worked, I, had, I never saw him before. And he was talking about me. I said, what's he talking about me? What did I do now? I thought you were going to be critical of me. Everybody's critical of me. And he said that Donald Trump is the only one that speaks up about the illegal immigrant problem. The only one. And I said, what's he talking about? And then he told the story of how his son, who's this incredible young guy, who is going to get a scholarship to college and a great potential quarterback, great athlete, was shot from nowhere. Because the system is really screwed up. Okay? Go ahead. Yeah, come to the mic. It's easier. Perfect. Yeah, my name is Don Rosenberg. It's D O N R O S E N B E R G. Uh, my son Drew was 25 years old at the time. He was a law student in San Francisco. He was coming home from school one night when Roberto Gallo, um, an, eagle, an illegal alien from Honduras, um, tried to make a last second left hand turn and the two collided. They were going very slowly. Had Gallo stopped, I wouldn't be here today because my son would have just been bruised. Instead, he accelerated, driving over my son's body. My son's helmet had come off, wedged under his tire, so he couldn't go forward. He backed up, driving over his body a second time, and then went forward a third time trying to flee, and a man, very brave man, had stepped in front of the car, and he stopped, and his tire was on my son's abdomen, and five men had to lift it off. Um, we were told he was in the country legally, which was not really true. Well, the guy who killed my son spent all of 43 days in jail, a lot of these people aren't even spending, and you'll hear from somebody else, one minute in jail for killing somebody. It's absolutely outrageous. Good. My name is Lupe Morfin Moreno, and I'm here representing my sister, Angie Morfin, and my 13-year-old nephew, Ruben. Ruben was gunned down by an illegal alien in Salinas, California, December 29, 1990. And after my sister got over going insane, she tried to do something, and she did. She worked with the foreign prosecution in San Diego, and they prosecuted him, not here, where they let him go from here to Texas where he murdered more people. But they went into Mexico and a Mexican judge gave him 20 years without parole. I blame the American press not only for Ruben's death, but for all these deaths and the deaths every day. Our children are dying every day. They're being raped. They're being brutalized. And with that, you have sex slavery. And that is not American. That's not American at all. It's in our newspapers, and you, they sneak it in in little things. Somebody got killed. Somebody got murdered. But they never tell you what nationality they are. It's on. Oh. It's on. oh, OK. Uh, that's A-L-T-H-E-A -E Shaw, S-H-A-W. Um, when we found out my nephew was murdered, uh, we heard the gunshots. And uh, the, the exact place where he was murdered, my brother and I, we played there. We were, my nephew was murdered by a gang member who was in the country illegally. 
and my two sisters, my brother, and I, we just knew that we would not have any problem with deporting gang members. But when they found out he was in a gang, no one wanted to support us, but they supported us until they realized he was in a gang. We went to Senator Feinstein's office, and, and it's so sad about Catherine, uh, because Catherine Steinle, because the people who were saying they're going to do something now, we went to Feinstein's office. We went, Mark Riley Thomas, super, the Board of Supervisors, they don't want to hear us. They say, Herb Wesson told my brother he was going to do something and didn't do anything. They tried to stop us from the prosecutors, everyone. And all we were trying to do was deport gang members. Yeah, my son, Jamil Shaw, the, the second, he was, uh, he was shot dead in the streets by an illegal alien that was released in the L.A. County Jail without any supervision on a Saturday night. And he, uh, he was in jail for assault with a deadly weapon, battery on a peace officer, and he only got eight months in the county jail, then released him four months early, you know, into the community. The same day he got out, he murdered my son, because what you have to understand what they don't tell you in L.A., Sheriff Baca, we had a meeting one-on-one, -on -one, me and Sheriff Baca, and he told me to my face that your son was murdered because he was black. Because in the L.A. County Jail, when the, when the Latino gangs are released, the Mexican Mafia directs them to go out into the community and commit crimes immediately. Because they don't want them to be rehabilitated or they come out and their girlfriend get, to get them to stop or they go to church, whatever. So they order them right back out there so they can get right back into the mix. But they order them to kill black people. So just what he was doing, he was looking for black people to kill. You know, the coroner said that he was laying on his back with a bullet wound in his stomach, with his hands up, and he was shot through his hand into his head. They thought he was shot three times because his hand wound was so severe, and then the coroner realized that he was like this, on his back, you know. And then people say, well, hey, Donald Trump is the only person I see talking about that. All the Republicans that are running for office right now, they were going to bamboozle us because they want us to think that they were going to enforce the border and, and go out to legal immigration and all that. But as soon as Mr. Trump started speaking, you see how all of them were trying to criticize him. So that means they weren't going to do nothing. You know, they promised us stuff over and over and over. The only person I could see is Mr. Trump because even though it might be almost the same age, I'm 54 years old and he looks like he's about the same. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, but but um, they're all excited. I have friends calling me, man. Did you hear what Trump said? Yeah, you know, I heard. <laughs> you know, you know, I said I haven't voted forever. I'm gonna vote. Black people in the neighborhood want to vote for Trump because they see hope. They see change. They know it's coming. You know, you can tell by the by the the atmosphere. Either way it goes, it's gonna be change. The Republicans gonna have to change if they want to beat him. You know, in which I hope they don't, but they have to adapt. The Democrats have to adapt. He has the momentum, he has the power, and we know he can do it. And me and my community, I trust him. You know, I trust him a lot. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was really nice. mm -hmm. His son was an incredible young man being considered by many colleges on full scholarship, a quarterback and a really talented quarterback. And uh, for no reason, for no reason. The man who killed his son was here illegally, illegally. His son should be with his parents today. My name is Brenda Sparks, B-R-E-N-D-A-S-P-A-R-K-S. The young blonde boy in front of me is my son. He was 22 years old, and he has had to take his girlfriend home, 9.30 at night. He's going along, just made a turn. He was about a quarter mile from his home when an illegal alien who entered this country illegally was working at the time illegally while driving illegally um, made an illegal left-hand turn into my son. My son was instantly put into a coma. They had to do a craniectomy on him because his head was swelling so horribly. His left leg was shattered and they had to put rods in it. All the time, my son was in the hospital for four weeks. My son's killer was driving around still. He didn't care. This is not just one case. 
were not just 10 cases. Between 8 and 13 American citizens die every day, every day, all over this country at the direct hands of illegal aliens. My former husband came here to this country. He came from Central America. Um, he decided to come here because some Marines had come down to his town and helped out and did some things, so he wanted to be a Marine, his heroes. He came to the United States legally, joined the Marine Corps, is still in the Corps. I believe he's a Master Sergeant now, you know, honorable career, citizen. And I had to call him while he was stationed somewhere else to tell him that our son was killed. And further, that an illegal from a neighboring country killed our son. The press, you guys didn't do anything. The local newspaper in the area that that happened, they twisted the facts, they outright lied, and never did they mention the guy who killed my son was delivering their newspaper. I was under the impression journalists are supposed to be fair and balanced. That's not fair and balanced. I have a loving friend, I call her my sister, her child was killed. And the AP did a story and interviewed her. They talked to four sob stories of illegals and her story finished it off. One, four to one. Where is the fair and balanced reporting? Please, people, take your liberal image off, take your conservative liberal, conservative mask off, and just report the facts. Three to 8,000 Americans die every, or five to 8,000 die every year in this country, Americans, at the direct hands of illegals not just the one that's up in San Francisco, and not just the little handful that's here, every single day. Stop reporting about the poor little illegals because their poor little issue, they brought it on themselves. My son did not bring on a crash. My son was 100% legal, and the monster who killed him was 100% illegal. Thank you. Hello, my name is Sabine Durden, S-A-B-I-N-E-D-U-R-D-E-N. -E and this is my son, Dominic. He called himself German Chocolate. And I also brought him. I'm carrying his ashes in my locket. That's how I'm around my son now. I heard about sanctuary cities and it was like, yeah, okay. The illegal alien turned, made a turn in front of my son's motorcycle, killed him instantly, and Dominic laid on a corner that I have to drive by every day. The re reason why we called him German chocolate was because he was born in Germany, so was I. And his dad was in the military, and even though his dad was military, I had to go through a lengthy process of trying to get my citizenship. I had to sign paperwork. I got prodded and propped so I wouldn't bring diseases. I paid a lot of money and I spent a lot of time and I chose to become an American in 93. And I proudly waved that flag and I thought my government is gonna protect me and my family. And on that morning, uh, when Dominic got killed, I didn't know right away. It was just all a blur, that's why my heart breaks all over for Catherine Steinle and her family. I found out he was an illegal from Guatemala. That came through Mexico. He was one of those dreamers. He came to this country and for eight years committed felony, two DUIs, one three weeks before he killed my son. And he, he ignored the laws of our land. But when he was arrested that morning, he enjoyed every bit of the laws that he broke. He was 
put into ice hold where he bailed out and I didn't even know it was possible. The DA didn't know it was possible. The killer of my son bailed out of ice hold for $10,000 cash. He was a day laborer, so you wonder where did he get that money from? And the judge gave him 90 days. Misdemeanor. 90 days for killing my only son, who's never done anything wrong. It took us a year and a half to get this guy deported back to Guatemala. And I'm sure he's back because his family lives in Riverside in a sanctuary city. And every day when I drive by my son's spot where he took his last breath, I look to the left and there are the guys standing there across from Home Depot and I'm looking for that face. Um, finally, somebody that had the guts to say what millions are thinking, but are afraid to say so. Even Hispanics that have done it the right way, they're tired of being linked in. They're tired of, well, we had to do it the right way. When, when am I going to get my refund? Yes, I'll take questions. Come on up, folks. Come on over. Just so you understand, I want people to be legal. I want people to come into the country. Let it be legal. Let it be legal. These are all illegal aliens we're talking about. Let it be legal. Let them go through the process. Open arms, all of us. Everybody up here would agree with me. Yes. I want people to come into the country in a legal manner. And that's what a lot of people want. And you know, I see that the polls all have me number one now. This is a much bigger issue. I didn't know this was going to be a big issue. And in fact, I had Macy's with no guts. And I had NBC with no guts. And the reason, by the way, NBC's angry at me has nothing to do with this. Look, they have Lion Brian Williams working for them. <laughs> they have Reverend Al Sharpton working for them. They have people working for them. Believe me, yeah. Trump is the best. Well, as president, as president, yeah, I do well with Congress. I've worked with politicians all my life. They're easy. If you can't make a deal with a politician, you can't make a deal. Well, I guess, you know, I must be doing something right. I'm number one in the polls. I'll tell you what, you people maybe don't understand it, you're not smart enough, but these people understand it. These people all understand it. They're calling your rhetoric hateful and racist. No, so not just, it's, you know what, it's just the opposite. But in light of that, Mr. Trump, is there anything in the last four weeks? Let me ask you, Neil, is, is my rhetoric racist? Do you believe no, this? No, it's not racist. What he's doing is he's speaking, like I said, he's speaking for the dead. He's speaking for my son. You know, he's speaking for the people who can't speak for themselves, that this man, somebody do something. It's, it should, it's unacceptable that we have to live like this because they want to push through illegal immigration. The least thing they can do is make it safe. If nothing else, we shouldn't have to have dead people just so you guys can, can get citizenship or a vote or cheap labor. Well, how is that fair to my son? He really different. I, I can't imagine how everybody in this room doesn't agree on this subject. People come in illegally, and in this case, they've killed their children. And they shouldn't have been here. If they weren't here, their children would be alive. Yes. Yes. Kate would be alive. Yes. Should I apologize? I, I think it's, it was so, it was stated as fact. I know it's not pleasant, but it was stated as fact. Read it, but don't read it from the middle of a sentence or three quarters of the way through. Read it. It was stated as fact. You know, in life, I have no problem with apologizing. When you do something wrong, I don't like to apologize when you do something wrong. But there's nothing, you'd have to read the statement. There's no reason to apologize for a statement that's so right. These people will tell you, many other people will tell you. Yes. I just wanted to say, um, when I started talk, speaking for my son, usually people don't connect him and myself. And I was called racist. So I would show him my son's picture and I say, okay, what else you got? Mm -hmm. Then they would call me anti-immigration. Well, I'm an immigrant. Next, bring it on. Mm -hmm. And so finally we have somebody that says it as it is. It might not resonate with some people, but you have to agree that if, if you would stand in our shoes without your kids, and you don't even want to think about that because that's everybody's nightmare, every parent's nightmare. You would look at this a little bit different. 
And I don't think Mr. Trump has anything to apologize 